You're listening to Sips of Sanity, your toolkit for emotional and intuitive intelligence, or what we like to call the dirty work. Let's do it. Hey, Kel. I'm excited for Sips of Sanity for June. We are going to be talking about the love languages. Mm-hmm. I'm excited too. Mm-hmm. So I understand that you did some research. Would you like to start? Sure. So I wanted to start just by, you know, talking about where people can kind of follow along and connect with this if they've never heard about love languages before. Um, you can go to fivelovelanguages.com and there are quizzes on that site. So this is presented by a gentleman named Gary Chapman. Um, he presents it in a faith-based way. So I want to put that out there for individuals who will be visiting the site as they listen to this, um, but it's something that's accessible to everyone. And if that is something that matters to you, great, work your faith into it, and that's beautiful. Um, if it is not, take it for face value in how you can apply it practically to your personal connections. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so <laughs> there are tons of books as well. So he's done individual books on the different five love languages if people want to read more in depth about it. Um, but I, I would challenge people to think first for themselves um, about what matters to them, Uh, brainstorm some examples for themselves before they seek out um, other people's opinions. That's a good idea. And and that actually involves pausing us. Maybe that involves uh, not listening to our examples first off, just hearing what the love languages are, walking away and maybe jotting down the things that come to mind um, from your, your past or things that you know that you desire, but maybe haven't spoken about, uh, this is a really great opportunity for inward reflection. Yeah. To know what your own are. So what is the value to you? Um, and that's going to require that you actually know what you feel. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is doing something for you and they think it's a love language because it's theirs to give to you and you don't have a feeling, a healthy or a fun feeling or a good feeling about it, then it's going to be important that you say to that person, this doesn't work for me. Okay. So let's actually talk a little bit more about that because that Mm -hmm. bleeds into how I want to encourage people to think when they're taking the quiz, how to think, not what to think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, So the reason that I'm really spelling this out, people might be like, it's a quiz. I can take a quiz. Fuck off. Um, But (laughs) I sat down and I wanted to throw my computer out the window when I took this quiz. And I I want to explain why, because some people will be in my shoes and some people won't. For some of you, you're going to have such obvious love languages that as you take the quiz, it's going to be a no-brainer because they they posit two against each other each time they ask a question, right? So it's going to say, would you rather, essentially, which is more important to you, which matters most to you. So like you said, you have to know what you feel. For some of you, it's just going to be an obvious click, like I mentioned, each time Mm -hmm. because you've got things that are way stronger than others. Mm -hmm. For others like myself, you're going to be like, they all matter. How how am I just supposed to pick one? Mm -hmm. And this is what I wanted to offer people. When you are reading these questions and you recognize that both are wonderful, both are lovely, and you hope that all of these things are in your life, sit down with the question, when push comes to shove, which would I rather have? And if we want to reword it, we can say it in a way where... Even if this or X happened, would I still feel like something's missing, Mm. right? So Mm -hmm. the five love languages are gifts, acts of service, quality time, touch, and words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So, and again, all wonderful things. So for example, what we're talking about when you take this quiz, I might love to hear the words, I love you when I come through through the door to come home at the end of the day. But if physical touch is not there with, you know, a hug or a kiss on the cheek, would you feel like something is missing? Mm -hmm. Right? So then you're going to have a really clear distinction about the hierarchy of which ones matter most to you, which comes right back to what you were mentioning about something mattering to one person more than yourself. Mm -hmm. And this can stimulate beautiful dialogue within relationships. And we're not just talking about partners, because if people are visiting the site, you're going to see, click on I am an adult, and then you can take the quiz if you are single or in a relationship. Right. That's excellent. 
Um, I, th- I, w- I think too, Kelly, it's good for people to think of the acts of serve, pardon me, to think of the languages of love in terms of what do I feel when, when someone is doing each of these for me out of that intention, that it is an act of love, that they're trying to somehow convey that. This is communication, right? So they're trying in some way to communicate to me that their intention is to demonstrate care. Cool. And I want to focus on one particular word that you said, which is from another person. So we can actually look at love languages in two Mm -hmm. completely different ways. The kinds that you like to receive and Mm -hmm. the kinds that you actually like to give out. And sometimes those aren't the same. Exactly. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And and hopefully people, as they listen to this, take maybe first, for example, they might consider themselves. What do I like to receive? And what do I like to give? And then what we would encourage is that if you have primary people in your life, and it doesn't have to be a partner, it could be a child, it can be a parent, it can be a, a best friend, a coworker, a neighbor, whoever is someone that's very important to you, then it's time, hopefully, to consider how do you choose to express love for that person? And did you ask them if that's what they enjoy? Amazing. Like, that's where we we really want to encourage that you're checking in with this person, because you could be doing tons of acts of service, and that's not their love language. They're waiting for you to say something. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I feel that one. <laughs> right? <laughs> and and then you feel like they don't appreciate you because I'm doing all of these things and they're not responding to me in the way that I thought they might if they see how much I'm working at loving them. Mm-hmm. And even though you're saying the way I thought they might, what's really happening is mm-hmm. the way I need. Oh, Absolutely. And this is why it's really important to have these conversations. Yeah. So in that you're spelling out the intention, right? We want to educate people about the five love languages. And the Mm -hmm. intent is to be able to take that information into your conversations, into your relationships, to communicate what matters to you, what matters to me, and how can we meet those needs together? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to do one a day in good old fashioned sips style. Mm -hmm. And we're starting with gifts. Mm -hmm. I think this one, if you're not familiar with the love languages as a concept, gifts is something that people very much understand, is something that we receive as a token of love or expression. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to break this one down into three different kinds and then ask you for some examples. Mm. So we've got practical or needs. So gifts that suit our practical needs in life. Mm -hmm. We've got gifts that are just sentimental, right, to people, places, and things or events in our life. And then we also have gifts that are in support of hobbies, projects, or interests. Oh, And I'm breaking it down for people because some will just hear the word gifts and think in one very narrow direction. I've experienced that where it was thought in one particular direction of flowers and chocolates. And that was the limit. That was the scope of their um, thinking process uh, that I might like something that's a gift. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to give the first example for practical, my kitchen. Oh, okay. Okay, so if I've already stopped listening. (laughs) (laughs) But we'll illustrate why in a minute. Go ahead. So if somebody gifts me a toaster, kitchen gadgets, um, maybe just something to clean mushrooms, I'm just trying to find things that are super practical, a carrot peeler, an egg slicer, I love it. Mm -hmm. That is something that is a gift for me because that means that that person knows that I like that kind of gift. Where somebody else would look at that as practical and go, what? An egg peeler? What? Well, I think what's important is you're combining two two pieces of what I want to talk about. Yes. Right? So, you, And here's the way that I would have looked at it is just based on need. So if I hear that your toaster oven broke and I thought, okay, I'm gifting her a toaster oven. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to replace that. Right. That's a need. Yes, that's practical. Yeah. But if I appreciate that, if that's something 
that I can see the love behind that, that without it, I can't have toast Mm -hmm. if it's a toaster. And you know, I like my morning toast. Then you're contributing to my feelings. You're contributing by buying something practical to my feelings, which I could appreciate. But if you're not checking in with me, then I can't appreciate that toaster. I might think, that's just something I would buy when I'm at Walmart. Mm -hmm. That's just something that I would pick up. Why would you buy me a toaster? Mm -hmm. And if I'm coming from that place and you haven't checked in, you haven't asked me how I feel about the toaster or my toast, or you don't know, then something practical that you might think is something that would really enhance my life with that morning toast is not something I appreciate because I would have just picked it up. Mm -hmm. And I want to pull in a different concept that I wasn't thinking about presenting. Um, Depending on who gives you the gift and on what day of the year, that can make a big difference too. Because if I showed up tomorrow morning on just a random day of the week and said, here, mom, I replaced your toaster oven, you might be like, Jesus, that was thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's a need that broke down in my life. And that's really kind. If I showed up on Mother's Day and said, I bought you a toaster oven, you might be like, what the fuck? Right. That is not a gift. Yes. That is a practical need that needed to be replaced. Now, that's on a different day of the year. Yeah. If I... Maybe as your daughter, if I replaced your toaster oven, you can just see, oh, my daughter's taking care of me. I really love that. Versus if your partner goes, hey, honey, I got you a gift. And you're like, fuck off. That is not a gift. (laughs) That is a replacement of an equipment in our house. Yes. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's all things to consider Mm -hmm. when you are the one receiving and when you are the one thinking that this is something I'm going to do to give as a gift. And one of the things I'm trying to point out here, as well as what you're trying to give to them today, is asking, Mm -hmm. is checking in and knowing that person and not making the assumption that you would know that my partner or my mom would like a toaster on Mother's Day or her birthday or Christmas or Valentine's Day. Yeah, you're pointing out assumptions and and rather than acting on them, you're clarifying them. Yes. And hopefully what people are hearing over and over again in this show and in the series is that there isn't a wrong answer unless you're not checking in, right? It's okay to value it. It's okay to not value it. It's just your preference and knowing your feelings, like you said. And sometimes, just to kind of further practical needs as a gift, um, sometimes we appreciate it more when the gift itself has been a struggle, right? Mm. So for some people who are living in different parts of the world, potentially air quality is terrible. And someone Mm -hmm. comes home and says, I got us an air purifier Mm -hmm. for the bedroom so that we can have better sleeps. That person might look so lovingly at their family member and be like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, I didn't even think of that. That was so thoughtful. It's still a practical need, but it is something that has tremendous thought behind it as Mm -hmm. a solution to ease your life. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to mention something potentially cute, potentially infuriating, Um, a stepladder. For right. someone who is short who, or a reacher who cannot reach, yeah. right? To be able to see, kind of like we just said with the air purifier, to see someone's need, to see where they struggle and say, I have, I'm offering you a solution mm-hmm. because I love you, because I want to, because you matter to me. Mm-hmm. I like that. Or t- like you pointed out to see a need and I'll say to point out a want or to point out something that is extra that perhaps they can't afford or they never would purchase for themselves. Mm -hmm. Cool. So can we move to sentimental? Yeah. Okay. So these can be things like photo albums. Mm. These can be things uh, like concert tickets to a band that you both love, Mm -hmm. right? This can be something nostalgic. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, One of my favorites that I've been gifted again and again in life is uh, candy from my childhood. Mm. Right, And it comes from my brother, which has that much more meaning because it was something that we shared together. Mm -hmm. Um, And so in in the way of gifts, even though it's actually fifth on my list of importance, this is something I can absolutely delight in. Mm -hmm. I like your t-shirt with your two dogs on it today. This was also a gift. Thank you. Yes. I'm, yes, I'm just I'm using that obviously as something to point out for that one that is sentimental. Mm-hmm. And that means that you know what is sentimental to that person. 
So can I offer more examples then? Yes. I love being gifted punny mugs or t-shirts. What? Puns. Punny. Oh, puns. Right? I have a typewriter mug that says you're just my type. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. And and friends and family know that, right? So it's yes. something that they delight in giving. It's something I delight in receiving. Right. And you're showing that you know that person. Mm. It isn't just that I'm giving you another mug when you already have 20 in the cupboard. Mm. I'm giving you a punny mug, we, which means sorry. it means something to you. Yes. I'm sorry. I jumped out of um, excitement because this actually involves both of us. Um, really early on when I was dating Eric, he gifted us and created um, by Sarlo mugs, like branded mugs for us, which we had never done before. Mm-hmm. He separated out our favorite color of jelly beans and put them in our respective mugs yeah, yeah. and wrote us a little note of encouragement. So yeah. th- there was actually a couple of love, love languages mixed in there. Yeah. And I just thought, holy man, that's that's wonderful. Yes. Yes, because it has meaning. He knows what it means to us. Yeah. And then for you and I on the receiving end, or anyone on the receiving end of, of something like a gift, you kind of learn about the other person, mm-hmm. right? You learn about their creativity. You learn about where their brain goes or what they're absorbing and observing of you. Mm-hmm. And they get to learn, I nailed it. Yep. I was totally right. And I know this person. Yay, me. <laughs> In a really healthy, fun way, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's stepping out there to get a mug and to fill it with something. He knows that we want the business to grow. He knows we like jelly beans. He knows you like words, so he writes it on a card. But maybe he didn't know that we would like one more mug, Mm -hmm. right? Or that we were ready to take that step in the business and move into merchandising or something, Mm -hmm. right? So he's taking some risk. And so then when someone is taking a risk, even if you don't really value the mug, it's important to value that they've taken the risk for you. Yeah. Yeah. To see all of the thoughtfulness and the effort. That's right. So can we move to hobbies or interests? Mm-hmm. Okay. I have a great example of this one. Take it away. Um, uh, Andrew, uh, and, and hopefully everybody knows now, and, and if you're brand new to the channel, then Andrew is my son and your brother. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew knew that I was, well, both of you, actually, this is this is a double whammy here. Um, all of you knew that I was trying to learn to sketch and that I was starting to color and starting to paint. And Andrew took me out for Mother's Day and said, I haven't bought any gifts for you yet. Um, but what I wanted to do for you was to go with you Um, to Michael's and say that I have this much money to spend on your Mother's Day gift. Would you like to go and pick out what what would contribute to your your hobby of painting, coloring, and sketching? Oh my God, Kelly, like I was so excited that I got to go in there and pick anything and everything that I wanted. And of course, he didn't know what to buy because he's not a painter, a a person who sketches or colors. Mm -hmm. So he knew his limitations and he went out and said, okay, I will gift it to her this way. And then he had the joy watching his mom run around Michael's for half an hour, um, grabbing all of these things that, that brought me my joy. And that excited me about what I could do and where potential could go. Mm -hmm. And adding to that, you and Eric went out of town came back from a trip and gave me a pencil set that you picked up in Sudbury at Chapters and a um, paint book to help me learn to watercolor. Oh, yeah. And then on another occasion, you asked a friend of yours who is an artist what you could purchase for me that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. And she told you about a traveling watercolor paint kit so that when I'm in the bush or on a hike, or when I'm out of town, that I could bring a portable paint set with me. Cool. So there are examples of the, of the gifts mm-hmm. and different things that people can do at different levels of awareness around the person who you're trying to gift. Mm-hmm. Those are wonderful. And actually, those are memories that I... I had forgotten a little bit of, Mm -hmm. so thank you. Mm -hmm. You're Um, welcome. Which touches on, I had written down equipment, so that makes me really happy. 
Kelsey, I wanted to talk about lessons. Mm. Um, but also kind of like a little bit of a cautionary message here too, is that are you buying lessons because you want this person to take part or are you buying them lessons because they've expressed interest? Mm -hmm. Right? Because if it's something that you are forcing upon them and it's not where they have expressed this would be something I'd like to explore, then we are imposing a gift upon someone mm -hmm. rather than actually gifting from a place of seeing the other person. Yeah, and I think this is important, especially if the person... I'm just going to go further, and thank you for that example. Um, it's important that if a person is saying, I don't want to do this anymore, I'm walking away from this, and now you're purposely buying them things because you benefit from them doing it. Mm -hmm. Now you're now you're bullying and it's not a gift. Mm -hmm. And it's important to know the difference between the two that you're manipulating. Yeah. Now, I, can I talk about a gift gone sideways? Yeah. Okay. So Eric idolizes a particular guitar player. And he just so happened to be offering Zoom lessons and I thought, oh my goodness, those are affordable. I'm going to purchase one of those oh. he can learn from. Mm. So I gifted it. And initially when it was received, it, it was just like overjoy, excitement, anxiety because of the, you know, meeting a hero kind of thing. Turns out he is a better player than he is a teacher. Oh. And afterwards, Eric said to me, that was one of the kindest things that you've ever gifted me. Please don't do it again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's it's really cool because this involves a lot of humility, right? This involves yeah. a lot of, okay, I'm going to show up and I'm, I'm going to hear this. I'm going to not take it personally. And I'm going to understand that it, it was initially very much appreciated in the way that it was offered. Um, it didn't suit my needs after all, mm -hmm. right? So, so you are hearing, okay, we tried that. We're not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. Now, this is good, clear communication. And we want people to listen to this because it means that you're both creating safety in your relationship for each other for honesty. Mm -hmm. And that if we get in a huff, well, I gifted it to you and you don't appreciate me, then you're not creating safety in the relationship for honesty. Right. And thank you. What a beautiful point to make because it's not about you. The That's gift right. that you give is about the other person, not about yourself. That's right. And if you are making it about yourself that they didn't appreciate it, then you had another agenda. And that is manipulative. Yeah. Actually, I'll share this one just before we, we wrap up for today's show. Um, I have a couple of four-year-old uh, nephews, and I gifted one of them a uh, season of soccer. So I said to his mom's, I want to give this to him because he's expressed interest and you guys want to expose him to things at this age. I'm giving this gift under the condition that at no point is my name to be used to force or coerce him to play out the season. Mm. If he gets exposed to this and decides this is not for me, this is not how I want to spend my time, my name better not come up as a threat. Mm. And they were like, got it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's not the intention of the gift. The intention is joy. And if he finds that it doesn't bring that to him, okay, good to know. That's great. And, and another little thing about that one, and I don't know if this was talked about at all. When you gift that to them, you're also probably, knowing you, asking them, do they want to commit to that kind of time frame for him? Absolutely. Yes. So you might be saying, here's a gift. This would require that you commit for two months, every, or once a week for games, once a week for practices. Is this something that you two as parents want to commit to? Yes. And the alternative, which I was happy to offer, is if that's not something that you want to do, I am happy to do that. If that wasn't the case, mm. if I was not happy to pick my nephew up and pick, like, drive him to and from the games, yeah. then it's none of my business to be offering it. Okay. Wonderful. So hopefully what we've done today is give some people some food for thought. Awesome. So we have four more shows on the four other types of love languages. Um, we hope that everyone will join us. And of course, we encourage questions, comments, concerns, or celebrations. Uh, you can email us at info at bysarlo.com if you have any of those. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Sips of Sanity. Catch the full monthly series on patreon.com forward slash by Sarlo.